So and later, actually later on, Associated Press reported that they had apprehended the second brother, in Adam, in the woods next to the school. Yes. Caught with bulletproof vest, uh, carrying four weapons, and that he'd been arrested in the woods next to the school, which, as we'll see later on, was completely un- not completely untrue. It was untrue in that uh, both brothers were not there. They later changed the main suspect, the dead gunman they found, to Adam. And this other mysterious person who was apprehended in the woods was, was later, they rectified that story. They said, no, no, that was not the second brother, but that was someone who we did bring into custody. Yeah, so that, that eventually panned out as the yeah. the explanation for this. But the question still arises, why they would ever have come up with this narrative? Who t- gave them this narrative if it was not true and was never true? And that's the important point. This was never true. And I know the media can get their facts wrong and all mm. this kind of stuff, but how did they come up with this narrative of them going to Hoboken, killing the father, uh, potentially killing two roommates, coming back, killing them? You know, there's too much uh, wrong there in terms of the story that the, that the media came out with, first of all, for it just to have been, oh, we made a little mistake here. We got this little fact wrong. They weren't getting facts wrong. They were getting the entire narrative wrong. So that suggests to us that someone was feeding them this, this information. I don't see any other other logical conclusion other than, other than that someone was feeding them, mm. the media, this information uh, for some particular reason, which we'll get into later on. Um, but well, there was other, there was other little details about you know that came out as well that are that are anomalous details of a of a maroon vehicle with a window shot out being being uh, seen driving away that the police were were looking for this. Um, there was, I mean, we'll just go through we'll just go through the main evidence because the fact of the matter is is that there is not a lot of evidence, um, and I suppose we should make clear here about. We should make it clear here the fact that when we talk about evidence and there not being a lot of evidence, what we're we, we at this point we believe that there is reason to suspect that this was not a lone gunman uh, shooting event, that Adam Lanza did not work alone. Um, but as 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 we're saying. There isn't a lot of evidence to support that, but we'll just go through the evidence that we are happy to kind of to 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 stick with in terms of presenting, uh, in terms in terms of backing up our our, uh, that argument. Yeah, well, I should clarify that there isn't there is not a lot of evidence from the scene or, or or evidence from what was reported to support either the official story, which we have to just take on faith, or a lot of the theories that are emerging about how exactly this went down. That, that's what a lot of people seem to be missing here, that um, if we're looking at something bigger than a single lone gunman who just goes postal, mm-hmm. then they, whoever they is, the team of people, have done a very, very good job of leaving very little behind. Um, the yeah, the the fact of the matter is is that there isn't a lot of evidence, despite what most other conspiracy theorist sites or conspiracy sites or whatever I don't know what what you want to call them, alternative media sites. Um, Despite what all of them, all of those sites are saying, uh, there isn't any clear evidence of a conspiracy at Sandy Hook, i.e. that it was a false flag, that um, that, that there was some kind of a, a other team of shooters involved, that, you know, there isn't a lot of evidence for this being a false flag conspiracy and that someone else did the shooting. We are admitting that, but we're also saying that we still believe that Adam Lanza was not a lone gunman. And hopefully by the end of the show, you'll understand why. Um, so just to go through the evidence that we are happy to to hang our hat on, let's say, as p- 
plausible or tentative evidence for there being uh, more than one shooter. Um, there is the evidence from the police scanners, the transcripts from the or the, the audio from the police from the police scanners of the day of where police were arriving on the scene, and you had one police officer stating or one police officer stating that he had a call from one of the teachers saying that she saw two shadows running around the side of the gym. Now, this was presented in such a way that this was a suspicious activity. I mean, I'm assuming that the police wouldn't be reporting on themselves or they, the police were probably aware uh, that, that where, where their own officers were. And this was a very early early report, so it seemed to be, it's, based on the, on the, on the audio, it, it seemed to be suggesting that this was before any police arrived on the scene or as police were arriving to the scene. And this was an update from the dispatcher saying that someone within, the, someone, a teacher or uh, an employee of the school had called saying that they saw two people running around the side of the uh, of the building of the gymnasium, two shadows. And then, not long after that, not long after that, on the audio, you hear uh, a police officer saying, uh, "Yeah, they're coming down the driveway towards me." Mm-hmm. And then a few seconds later, he says, "I've got them. I've got. I've got one of, one them, of them. I've got one proned out," which suggests that he's got apprehended one of them and prone out is prone out on the ground. Yes. So there's that evidence, which we understand is tentative, but and it could be explained by you know, this was for example, there's the um there's the the report in the newspapers about um a parent of one of the school children arriving to uh that morning he was scheduled to arrive to help out with a gingerbread man making class for some of the elementary uh, kids and he arrived um, and heard shooting and then ran around the building. We don't know exactly where he ran, but he, he ran somewhere. So his name was, uh, his surname was Manfredonia and he, potentially he could be one of these people that um, that was running around the side of the building. We don't know. Uh, the other evidence for more than one person involved was the video evidence of the hill behind the school taken from a helicopter showing a police running around the side of the school and up this hill in, in between the trees and apparently surrounding man up there. Uh, this has since been uh, explained away as a member of uh, basically, oh, yeah. a member of a SWAT team from a local, from a, from a nearby town, who just happened to be roaming the hills. I don't, I don't know how this guy. There is no explanation as to as to why he was there, but apparently he was. Uh, this is in the, from the New Town B, the a local newspaper. In this is the hook. this is a very recent report. This yeah. is not something that was uh, clarified at the time. Only a week or ten days ago, the New Town B uh, reported that. The I think that they were referring to the second gun, second suspect who had been arrested in the woods, and they said that oh well this was a off duty tactical police officer from out of town. They gave no explanation for why he was there or the fact that he was armed. Just that he was there. And the fact of the matter is that this video of this man up in the in the hill, just right behind the school, and the police running up the hill to apprehend him, uh, this has been available and talked about on on various news websites for a, a couple of weeks now. And it's just in the past four or five days that the Newtown B came out with this explanation as to who this guy guy was. Um, of course, that still doesn't. I mean, it, it, because they were so sparse. On the uh, on the detail, uh, it doesn't really put our minds at at ease as to whether or not this guy, or uh, as, as, as to uh, what he was uh, doing, as to what he was doing, or, or, or that he was definitively just you know some good natured uh, tactical member of a tactical squad from another town who just happened to be, I don't know. I mean, you can let your imagination run wild as to how he managed to get over there or why he was up in the, on his own uh, in the hill behind the school. But that's the official story is that he just was there to try to kind of help out. Yeah. He had heard he had heard something about the the shooting on maybe a radio and and 
but the fact that he was wandering around up in the hills and that he was well, if he was a member of a tactical team from another town, he was probably armed if he was arriving on a at a scene uh, that he thought was a crime scene. So that's not very satisfactory. Uh, it doesn't look good as far as we're concerned. Um, and it leads, lends itself to the to the idea that there may have been may have been more than one shooter, and this guy could have been part of uh, a team of people in, involved in the shooting. Um, until we would get a more a more concrete and a fuller explanation as to who this guy is. I mean, there were other eyewitness reports as well uh, of people that, uh, and you can probably you may have seen these on on YouTube and stuff media media uh, video reports of eyewitnesses at the scene saying that a guy had been taken taken down uh, from from the school from from the direction of the school in handcuffs. He was wearing um, camel pants and a black jacket, and that he was sitting. Uh, he was placed into a police car, uh, apparently sitting in front of a police car, which would suggest that he was, you know, usually... Not, not in any serious trouble. Yeah, exactly. That he, and or he had maybe presented credentials that passed muster with uh, the, the emergency police, uh, the emergency responders on the scene. Yeah, um, exactly. And if you think about it that way, that is how the the officer we just mentioned the off duty tactical police officer. I mean, he just needs to show who he is. Yeah. And nothing more said about him. He's not no. going to be exposed in the media. You know, it's it's a matter of that immediately then he he's he's him being there is part of the internal uh, the official police investigation and they're not they're not they don't feel any need to uh reveal any more information about him. So maybe we should just summarize there that that we're not talking about the same person being seen arrested in all these cases. No. We've got on the one hand, on the police audio, we have um, uh, clearly an officer, you can tell by his voice that he, he is animated, he's on the scene, this is the one who describes, they're coming at me, and then he later says, just after he says, I've got one prone doubt. So that, that, that's one instance of someone being apprehended. Then we have the guy in the woods, of which... The video footage appears to be showing that two police officers running up the hill and apprehending someone. Then he's been, that's the same guy who's then taken down in handcuffs and placed inside the police car. So that's true. And then there's a third. There was a young boy who described a, when he was led away from the school, this was a, a student of the school. He said when they were walking away, they walked past the firehouse and there was a guy in handcuffs. Uh, lying down on the floor of, of the firehouse, which is at the entrance to the driveway uh, of the school. Mm -hmm. So that would put all those three separate instances at different locations. Yeah, um, exactly. One at the school they being caught. separate people apprehended. Yeah. Um, Unless it can be explained, but I mean, it's not going to be explained at this stage. But yeah, I mean, in terms, of, in terms of in terms of looking at the bare facts of it, there seems to be evidence for three different people having been arrested uh, in the vicinity of school on that day. Uh, one of them has been explained as this tactical uh, team member from another town, and that's all we all we know about him. Uh, the other one is potentially the the parent of one of the the father of one of the children, Mr. Manfredonia. He plausibly could have been arrested, and then the, the the and he could have been. I mean, it doesn't really fit. I mean, it, we we don't know anything more about him, but whether he was or wasn't arrested, all we know was that he was at the school. He gave a report to the media that he went to the school. It, there was nothing about him being arrested, so we don't know if he was one of the people who were arrested. But we do know that three people were arrested. As to who they are.